Welcome back to C Sharp for Beginner series. In this lesson, I will be covering loops. I hope you have uh, listened to my earlier tutorials 1 through 4, install C Sharp, are able to compile and run a simple application. You understand variables, data types, and assignments, and understand if and the switch statements. The objectives of this lesson are to learn about for and while loops. The for statement provides a compact way to iterate over a range of values. It is often referred to as the for loop because of the way in which it repeatedly loops until a particular condition is reached. Uh, again, I will uh, start with an example. So here is a simple for loop. This is where the for loop begins and this is where the for loop ends. In this example, there is only one statement inside the for loop. There could be more. Now let's look at the for loop. So the for loop has three parts. The first part is called the initializer. The second part is the termination condition. And the third part is the increment. That could also be a decrement. Now let's talk about how this for loop works. In this case, when you enter the for loop, you are initializing the counter variable i to 1. Immediately after that, it will check the condition. Is i less than 10? The answer is yes. So it will go through the loop. It will encounter this statement and uh, generate the output. It will go back then at the top of the loop, but it will now go to the increment part. So the i is going to be incremented by 1, i becomes 2, it will check for the condition, the condition is still true, so it will go through the loop, print the next value of i in this statement and continue on. So this for loop would keep on going as long as that condition is true. So now the first value of i that was printed is 1, what's going to be the last value of i that is going to be printed? Is it going to be 10? or is it going to be 9 or is it going to be 11? Let's look at the next slide. So this is going to be the output of the program. It started at 1 and it stopped at 9. It did not print 10. So now let's go back and look at it. So what happens when here the counter variable i was 9, it's going to print 9, it is going to go back to the increment. i becomes 10 now. It is going to check for the condition. Is i less than 10? The answer is not true. So the loop is going to be immediately terminated and it will jump out of the loop, go on to the statements following the loop. So that was the reason why 10 will not be printed. On the other hand, if you had made this statement as i less than or equals 10, then the last value of i that will be printed would be 10, but not in this case another type of for loop. This is the nested for loop. It is basically the same type that I showed you earlier except there are two of them here. One within another. Here is the outer loop based on the counter variable i which begins here and ends here. Then inside that for loop we have another loop based on the counter variable j which begins here and ends here. Now what happens when you enter the loop? When you enter these, these loops, i is set to 1, it is going to continue on, then within the inner loop, j is set to 1, it is going to keep on running as long as the value of j is less than i. Since i is 1, it is going to run one time, it will print i equals 1, terminate the inner loop, go back here. i is going to be incremented by 1, which is 2. So now the inner loop is going to run twice. Okay, so load that program in Visual Studio and uh, this is what uh, my screen looks like. You all may look slightly different, but essentially it should be the same. So now here is the first line of code. So go to the margin area and click on, click against that statement. So this is called setting the breakpoint. A red dot should appear. So now you are ready to run the program. So click on the start button and uh, when it comes across that statement, 
that line is going to be highlighted in yellow so it says if you move if you move the mouse pointer over that variable it says i equals 0 because that statement has not been executed yet then to move on to continue moving one statement at a time you press the function key 11 f11 so here here I go f11 so now it says i equals 1 it's going to go to the next statement and check the condition and then it is going to continue on enter the inner loop um, and let's see what's happening here so it's going to print the value of i which is 1 out of that loop j plus plus j now becomes 2 is j less than or equals i no so that loop is going to be terminated it's going to go to this line terminate the inner loop and then continue with the outer loop remember i was 1 to begin with now i becomes 2 move the mouse pointer over that variable so you will be able to see what is going on and now the inner loop would run two times i equals 2 and again i equals 2 for values of j equals 1 and 2 in this case the j is going to become now 3 and uh, which is bigger than i so that the loop is going to be terminated and now it's going to pick up the next value of i and so forth so this is a neat way of handling or looking at uh, uh, what is going on in your program when you don't understand that or you think uh, you may have a you know bug in your program easy this is the easy way to check that so we are done with the for loop and the next one is the while loop the while loop is somewhat similar to for loop except more limited so when you are when you want to run a segment of the code multiple times but you if you don't have a counter variable but you only have a condition based on which you want to continue running or stop you use the while loop so here is the while loop it starts with the while keyword and there is only one condition here count less than or equals 10 so as long as that is true the while loop would keep on running every time at the end goes to the end of it it'll go back and check for that condition so let's look at this while loop to begin with the count variable is set to 1 count is less than or equals 10 so it'll go inside the loop it'll enter the loop the count is incremented by 1 so count is now 2 and you print the value of count so that's why the last value the first value of count that is printed is 2 the first value of the output is 2 continue on go back to the top of the loop the count is still less than or equals 10 increment count by 1 which becomes 2 you which becomes 3 and you keep on going and the last value of the count variable that will be printed is 11 because you increment by 1 and then you increment by 1 after checking for that condition so again you may want to go back and try this pro uh, program yourself the next one is a variation of the while loop called the do while loop the only difference here is that you start with the do keyword and you put the while statement at the bottom of the loop so in this case you are checking for the condition at the bottom of the loop not at the top of the loop no matter what the value of the count variable was it will always enter the loop at least once so that's the main difference between a while loop and a do while loop in the next example I'm going to write a program which will keep on asking the user to enter a number uh, and it'll add up it'll give me the sum of all the numbers that the user had entered the user doesn't need to tell me how many numbers the user will be providing the only condition here is that if you enter a negative number then that's a signal that you are done entering all the numbers so in this case run this program I ent it says enter a number a minus 1 to stop I enter 3.5 first and a 4.7 next and a 8.9 after that and uh, we earlier we learned about how to get the user input we use the console dot read line statement to get a string convert that string to a double because that's what we are expecting here and then every time I get that double value from the user I check whether it is negative or not whether it's less than zero or not if it is less than zero then I break out of the loop 
so that's a new statement we are learning if not I keep on adding that number and continue that loop my loop will always continue until uh, it encounters this break statement so in this case I entered four numbers 3.5 4.7 8.9 and then minus 1 telling my program to terminate and then it gives me the sum of the first three numbers that I entered the result should be 17.1 try out uh, this example again okay so we are done with uh, the loops the for loop the while loop and the do while loop I have two more lessons coming up the one is on arrays how to use arrays in C sharp and uh, uh, why do we need arrays after that I'll briefly talk about object-oriented programming and introduce you to classes thank you